Great. So my name is Chris Holgraf. Uh, I'm the director of a new nonprofit called the International Interactive Computing Collaboration. Um, and that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. And I should say in advance, I apologize if you hear a screaming baby in the background. We are near the end of uh, nap time. So, you know, we'll see if, if that fun thing happens. <laughs> Um, so maybe first, just a little bit about my background. Um, I started off doing research at Berkeley in the neuroscience world, so a sort of domain-specific world. And while I was there, I got more involved with uh, an ecosystem and a project called the Jupiter Project, uh, which is a project that builds tools for interactive computing. And I'll describe that a little bit later on. Um, while I was there, uh, I focused most of my time on shared infrastructure for interactive computing. So we did a lot to make it easier to run Jupyter tools on Kubernetes and on cloud infrastructure. Uh, we helped launch a project called Binder, which is um, cloud infrastructure for open, reproducible, and shareable um, computational environments. And we also ran infrastructure at the university itself, um, specifically the UC Berkeley Data Hub, which I'll talk about in a bit as well. Um, and so really, a, a lot of 2i2c is taking the experience of myself and my co-founders and trying to take the things that have worked well and bring them into a nonprofit so that other organizations can enjoy them as well, um, which is why I talk about it here. So really quickly, in case you're not familiar with either Jupyter or the Jupyter project, um, everything in Jupyter revolves around interactive computing. Um, and by that, what I mean is the parts of computing where there's a, a human in the loop, where there's a person you know, sitting in front of a computer or a screen of some sort, and they're exploring data, they're trying to play around with their own ideas. Um, you need rapid feedback, you need to be able to rapidly iterate on things. Um, and the kinds of like interfaces and experiences that you design for this are very different um, from a traditional you know, like running a big machine in the cloud, that kind of thing. Two examples of interactive computing interfaces are the Jupyter Notebook, um, which is a, a fairly popular open source tool that allows you to interweave narrative and code and the outputs of running that code. Um, a, a newer version of this interface is called Jupyter Lab, which is just a more flexible and composable interface that allows for the same kind of interactive computing. Um, and beyond just interactive computing, I think at Berkeley, we found that shared infrastructure for interactive computing is really helpful at, at accelerating diversity and learning, uh, discovery and learning, but also at bringing a more diverse audience to this kind of data and interactivity um, space, uh, making it more accessible to people. So as one case study, I just wanted to highlight the UC Berkeley Data Hub. So there's a really large introductory data science course at UC Berkeley called Data8. And it's Berkeley, it's a big public school. So this course has like 1400 students in it. And for anyone who's taught a, a, you know, a software carpentry course or a boot camp, you know that like one of the hardest things is just getting everybody up and running with the same environment. And doing that for 1400 students means that you know, by the end of the semester, we would still be debugging people's installation issues. So what Data8 does is it runs entirely on cloud infrastructure. Students access their interactive sessions via uh, a web URL at datahub.berkeley.edu. All of the course material is written in notebooks and hosted online as a sort of public textbook. And students basically use this, these centralized cloud-based environments as the bottleneck for everything that they do in the course. So they do the homeworks, the, the textbook can be interacted with um, by this infrastructure. The exams are um, given on this infrastructure. And it's basically allowed us to scale this course and make it accessible to a much wider array of students than we other, ever otherwise would have. And the really cool thing about Data8 is that it runs entirely on open source technology. Um, it runs almost entirely in a cloud agnostic manner. And a lot of the work that was done to make Data8 possible was done by improving those open source tools that are out there. So this is a really quick diagram of the kinds of tools that we use. Um, I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail here and I'll, use it, I'll leave it here for a reference. But the basic idea is that you use GitHub to store all of the content for the course, and most of it is just online and, and freely available for anyone to use. The materials are available at a public website. We have uh, what's called a Jupyter Hub, which provides remote access to shared computing infrastructure and provides environments and authentication for all of the students to access. Um, and then we have basically an open source stack of environments and, and data analysis packages and whatnot that actually power the work that the students are doing in the class. So this has been a really successful story. Um, Berkeley has, has really um, taken this to kind of a new level in terms of like 
committing to developing infrastructure that is as agnostic as possible. We have full control over that infrastructure, which means we can take it to different clouds, we can deploy it for different use cases, we can reuse it for things like the research community. And again, this stack of sort of open source tools and data science is a de facto standard. It's the same stack that like everybody is gonna use, whether they're in research or education or they go into industry or whatever. Um, and I think that that's really important too. The other really important thing is that from a sustainability perspective, as an open source project, we rely on other organizations to contribute back to the Jupiter project. And it's actually much harder to do that than you might imagine. Um, and so I'm particularly excited that all of these improvements for Berkeley were only possible because we also uh, contributed to these upstream projects that we were using in our deployments. However, the challenge of this is that it's really hard to replicate in other institutions. I mean, we ran a ton of workshops and boot camps and tutorials, and I wrote God knows how many pages of documentation. And what we kept on running into was that at the end of the day, deploying a bunch of your own bespoke cloud infrastructure was just a non-starter. It required too much expertise in cloud infrastructure to be able to do. And this is especially true for smaller institutions or for institutions that um, didn't have as much resources as others. So if you were at UC Berkeley, maybe you could scrounge up the resources to hire an engineer to deploy and maintain all of this, but you wouldn't be able to do that if you were at a local community college. So this is what led to the vision of 2I2C. Um, and I and my collaborators on 2I2C come from many of these same similar experiences as to what I've just described here. So the goal of 2I2C is to create a nonprofit organization with the goal of supporting research and education through interactive computing. Um, it'll be a service provider for sort of customized deployed cloud infrastructure that uses this stack for various use cases in, in research and education. Um, it'll also provide collaboration for development if you want work to be done on this broad stack for a particular use case that needs you know, some expertise in open source development. We can do that as well. And again, crucially, it not only wants to serve the educational and the research communities, but it also wants to serve the open source communities by contributing back its resources and by supporting um, the kinds of projects that we use that underlie this stack. Um, there are a bunch of different use cases that the co-founders are sort of coming from originally that have led to the development of, of this. And I'm listing just a few of them down there. But um, I think that they all serve as sort of inspiration for how we can replicate the success stories of things like the Data Hub, um, things like the Binder Project, things like Pangeo, and as many other organizations as possible. So uh, to, what 2I2C wants to do is provide managed interactive computing infrastructure that's designed totally itself with open source tools and open standards that provides environments that utilize a fully open source ecosystem and that open source stack that has become so popular nowadays, that's compatible with institutional procurement and, and sort of knows how to interface with institutions and that's entirely vendor and infrastructure agnostic. Um, as an organization, 2I2C is, it aspires to be dedicated to open communities and, and a, a, the sort of diverse and very inclusive ecosystem of people around it. We want to be sustainable as an organization and we wanna be a reliable partner to universities and procurement offices. And we also wanna be, again, a core partner of those open source communities. We wanna be embedded inside of those communities as co-leaders and partners um, and whatnot. Okay, um, so one thing that I really quickly wanna highlight is what we like to call the rights to replicate. Um, and we think this is something that's really important when it comes to open infrastructure and, and open science. And the quickest way to describe what the right to replicate is, is to say that we want you to have the right to replicate your entire infrastructure stack in its entirety anywhere else with or, without, with or without 2i2c. We don't want you to be reliant on 2i2c in order to run your stack. We just want to make it easy for you to run an entirely open source stack if that's what you want. Um, and here are just a couple of examples of, of things that we think we need to do in order to ensure that. Um, and I'll let you take a look at that um, in follow-ups. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, some of the tools in this are vaguely in the sort of PyData, Jupyter, R, RStudio, that general ecosystem of tools. Um, and I'm not gonna go into all of these de in detail here, but the, the main point is that I think that this is a set of tools that is both, it's sort of text the right boxes of open source and community driven and whatnot, but it's also applicable both to most use cases in education and most use cases in research and open scholarship, which I think is really um, important. And so what we wanna do is to be able to provide those environments for particular use cases um, for institution research teams and, and educational groups. So what are we doing now? Um, 
as I said, 2I2C is a very young organization. And the first thing that we need to do is both learn and develop a sustainability model for ourselves for providing this kind of infrastructure. Um, we're deploying and developing some pilot infrastructure for a few different communities. And if you're interested in um, participating in that, please do reach out. And as I said before, we try to think a lot about community and values and mission. And a big part of what we're trying to do now is sort of um, intentionally build an inclusive and a diverse uh, organizational culture. Um, and I welcome your, your contributions there too. Um, we're hiring an engineer. So if you know of anyone that has some cloud engineering skills and would like to, to participate, please let me know. Um, if Again, if you're interested in pilots, then, then please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, and if you have thoughts of yourself about um, how to run sustainable infrastructure, how to participate in this ecosystem of open scholarship in a sustainable fashion, uh, please let me know. So that's it. Um, I'll have a few links there if you want to follow up or if you'd like to ask me any questions. And thanks very much for your time.